Let us start with a very simple question. What is the goal of a cricket team? I'm assuming all of you are familiar with the game of cricket. Is it to make too many runs, score centuries, take all 10 wickets, field very well or something else? I believe it is to win the match. Let me give you a small example. Way back, almost how many years back? Almost 16 years back, February 2006, Australia had made 434 runs for the first time crossing the 400 run mark in a one day match against South Africa. However, South Africa made 438 to win the match in next four hours. As against this, India had made only 183 in the World Cup in 1983. And they won the match, they won the World Cup against West Indies. So who has done better? India or Australia? The obvious answer is India, that despite they are not making even 200 runs, they won the match while Australia made 400 plus and still lost. Why I'm bringing this parameter, often we find in the organization, means themselves become the goal. Anyway, now what will be the role of every single player in the team, be it a cricket team or within an organization? Should they have different goals? Should they have different articulation? And what would happen if different people have different articulation? What would happen? In my opinion, it will be chaos. Unfortunately, how many organizations would have the same situation? What are the chances that if you have the top 10, 12 people in any company in the world, and ask a simple question, what is the goal, not goals, you are likely to get near identical articulation. My experience has been next to nil. So it's extremely important that the very first step, no matter what game you are playing, no matter what organization you are leading, is to get an agreement on the goal of the organization among at least the top team. And not just the goal, it's very precise articulation and very precise measurement. If it is, it should be unambiguously measurable. Otherwise, it will lead to a lot of confusion. After having decided the goal, whatever it may be, it can be customer satisfaction, it can be employee satisfaction, it can be making money, anything, but it has to be one. Now, many times we have a lot of debate among organizations. Oh, somebody says the salespeople say our goal is to satisfy the customers. The HR person says, no, I must keep my employees happy. Of course, the finance man and the CEO, that's fine, but I need to make money. Is there any gap between the three? Is there any conflict? Let's examine. Let's assume because it's very fashionable, though not necessarily done, is to say that we want to delight our customers, satisfy our customers. Incidentally, this is also another synonym. We want to be a world-class company. Now, what does a world-class company mean? If you don't satisfy your uh, customers, you can't be called world-class, okay? We want a zero defect company, great. But all this we are doing so that our customers are happy. We are able to deliver what we have committed to them. Now, let me ask the next question. Is it possible to delight the customer both short and long if our employees are not happy? Chances are that in the long term, 
you will not be able to satisfy your customers if your employees are not happy. Yes, it's possible for short term and rather short term, you may be able to keep your customers happy even if your employees are not happy. So what have we learned just from here? A necessary condition and not a luxury in order to satisfy the customers, we have to satisfy our employees now as well as in the future. Let's move on. Is it possible to keep our employees happy now as well as in future if we don't make money? How long the company can keep on keep making its employees happy? Just pay the salaries and various other uh, requirements if they don't make money. For a short duration, yes, but not for long duration. After all, no organization has infinite money. Even if they have the will to keep on uh, supporting the employees, but not for long. So from here, we do learn that in order to keep customers happy, we need to satisfy the employees. And in order to keep the employees happy, we need to satisfy the concept of making money. Now let me complete the circle. If we say that our goal is to make money, can we do without satisfying our customers? Short term, yes. Long term, no. No company which does not satisfy its customers can survive for long. Forget about making money. So frankly, there is no conflict between the three. There is not even a hierarchy. Choose anyone, the other two become the necessary condition. So what have we concluded? One, every company must have a goal with clear measurable parameter. Second, all the top management must have identical articulation of the goal. Third, customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction, and making money are three sides of the same coin. They are not different. You can't achieve one without achieving the other two. It is theoretically impossible for long. Short, yes, possible. So I have coined a term, keep the CEO happy. Oh, you mean I have to satisfy my boss, the super boss? No. CEO does not stand for chief executive officer. CEO stands for customers, employees, and owners. Thank you.